Hello, I'm Jesus Labarta and I'll be talking today about uh, how the operating system noise impacts the performance of uh, our applications and our uh, measurement analysis. Similar to the song of have you ever seen the rain, the question is uh, have you ever seen the noise? And uh, I pose this question because I believe that uh, we very seldom do it in the, in the world of performance analysis. And I think it is important. It is important to understand to what extent has our data our measurements being perturbed and uh, be able to obtain greater confidence in, 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 in the measurements and in the assessments that we derive from those measurements. I will be showing how to use Paraver to identify this noise and uh, do it on a couple of traces for a detailed uh, region of, of, of focus of analysis as well as for a filter trace. And the first point is what is noise? And in reality, see noise, noise as, as, as a big box where we put every variability that we do not understand. Essentially, we, we observe these variabilities, so we do several runs of a program and we try to compute uh, averages and standard deviations and maybe in some cases use the minimum value to try and, and derive this is the variability, quantify the variability of the run or to say what would have been the behavior without, without uh, such noise. My belief is that although that is a first approach, it's actually not giving a lot of detail about the insight, about what is actual, the actual microscopic behavior of this noise and, and how it actually impacts the performance of the application in, in all, its, all of it, in different phases, maybe the impact may be different. So understanding that is a very important thing because being, it's like being noise a property of nature where like everything above zero Kelvin generates thermal noise. So we, we, we will always have noise in our measurements. There's no way to escape it. It's going to be uh, important to understand how much it is affecting our runs and learn how to live with it rather than just fight straight against it. It is important to, in this uh, uh, identification of the noise, to also have some not solo qualitative observation, but a quantitative uh, uh, identification, such that we can try to separate what is to blame, to be blamed to the application, and what is to be blamed to the run on a noisy environment, and avoid uh, blaming one for the other. So this is what we will be doing. We'll be looking at the characteristics and, um, and patterns that uh, we could characterize, describe as noise in full filtered or bus mode traces. I will be looking only in the today at full and filtered traces. It is important, as we said, to quantify it. So I will be describing how we will we can quantify this for traces that contain hardware counters and particularly cycles hardware counters. And it would also be noise to, uh, to predict what if there was no noise and because it's comparison to what we observe in the presence of noise can tell us more insight about the structure and the impact of such a noise. But I will leave this for another day. In reality, with a little bit more of detail, what are the views that we will be using to identify potential patterns of noise, mostly based on useful duration views and histograms. And based on those, we can speculate on what are the causes and the effects of, of such noise. In order to identify those patterns, this, this I mean, this reminds me the a scene of the of the film of the Hunt for the Red October, where there is this sonar operator that at some point in time mistakes uh, the, the Russian submarine with a whale or with some strange other perturbation. And then the captain asks him, well, but if we meet him again, will you be able to identify it? And the guy says, well, now that I know what I have to look for, I will be able to identify it. So this is a little bit uh, uh, what I will try to, to explain and demonstrate is understanding what we have to look for in terms of understanding where is noise.
but of course uh, the quantitative uh, uh, validation of the speculations that we may be doing here is a very important a very important aspect that I will also be showing. In a sense, speculating based on patterns and based on perceptions is perfectly legal. We can do as many speculations as we want. We should try to avoid the frequent practice, which is just throw the speculation, throw the hypothesis and not try to demonstrate it. And this is what I think we should try to, to do in the, in the analysis, try to quantitatively demonstrate. I have in the, in the slides some patterns that we will be seeing on the demo, so I'll leave them for later. Uh, what I want to show is a little bit is the, what is the fundamentals on which we base the quantification of noise. And this is for hardware counters, uh, reading hardware counters and the entry and exit of MPI calls. We have for every computation burst, we have the number of instructions, number of cycles and its duration. In the case a perturbation appears or a prehension, for example, the thread, the core will be taken away from the application for some while and then recovered. The important thing is that the, being the hardware counter reads virtualized, the actual number that we will get when reading the hardware counter here will not include the time the core was devoted to other things. The duration will certainly be elapsed, time is elapsed time and, and that's what we'll be obtaining. The result is that if in this case we divide cycles by, by duration, we should obtain the frequency of the processor. In this case, if we divide cycles by duration, we should obtain a lower value. And this would be indicative of the existence of noise. Unfortunately, it's not only of the existence of noise, it's also the existence of, for example, some voluntarily calls to operating system activities that end up blocking the process. But it may also be the result of activities like uh, doing very intensive computations in some cores that reduce the frequency in the case of those very intensive computations. So uh, the question that motivated the session was, have we ever seen the noise? Was this pattern of that if we see it, we will now, we know that what we have to look for, we will identify. And this is just a, a plot that we will see in the, in the real demo about how to how to do that. So let me switch to the real demo and we will kind of develop in a certain feeling of how these things uh, evolve. I have prepared a trace that I have already loaded. Uh, this is the trace of a cut of, I mean, it's, it's kind of, uh, 30 megabytes compressed is in the order of 300 and compressed. I've loaded it and I will be, uh, as I said, the, the, the first kind of uh, configuration file that we'll be using would be based on useful duration. I have some pre-declared configuration files and this is the useful duration. I load on it and this is, this is going to compute the histogram here and it's going to, it has its associated timeline. This is the histograms of useful duration. The trace has 384 processes, so these are 384 histograms. The timeline is this. It's associated timeline. And in, in this timeline, we can observe a first long computation here. There's a, a relationship between histogram timeline, so this region here correspond, will correspond to a long computation durations in the histogram, so spikes in the, long, in the beams towards the right. Then we have other regions that have very reduced small granularity, small computations, things like between 0 and 50 microseconds, as we see here. And these are in the low part of the histogram. It's a little bit more messy and diffi more difficult to identify them individually. But in the patterns, we see regions which are idling, the background color. So this region here, there's an idling. And, and we can start thinking, is this idling caused by noise or is it caused by a actual property of the application? For noise, we should be looking for irregular random scatter patterns. Should be, it's, as we said, it's, there's always a doubt. In this case, for example, this pattern of, of idle cycles that happen on the last processor seems to be not very random, not very sporadic, seems to be potentially a characteristic or a property of the application. All of these things will have to be then validated, or this hypothesis will have to be validated 
by the quantitative analysis. There's another region here, for example, these holes, which look like propagations of a perturbation that shows up here. This perturbation is happening not in one only one thread, it's actually happening in, in different threads. And they are all of them elongated with respect to the other ones by the same amount of time. So it's again something which is not very, very random, but uh, still, so probably this is probably not noise, or it might be a kind of noise or perturbation that makes several guys, several of these guys, probably we could speculate that maybe also noise running in the same node and the so process is running in the same node and maybe it's a noise that affects the whole node. So all of these are speculations where, that we would have to validate later. We can see, for example, here in this area of fine microscopic uh, fine granularity, we can see that the duration is, is very low everywhere between 0 and 50 microseconds uh, where I put the mouse. So uh, there is very little contrast here, so I would like to increase the contrast and fit the scale so that I represent properly the smaller and highest value. And here I see regions where I have long executions, while most of them are in the range of 11, 10, 9, very short, few microseconds. Th this pattern is, is, is probably looks like a little bit more random, random in space in terms of processors, sometimes one, sometimes two. A random in terms of time is not always the same processor who does it. It's a pattern that seems to be causing a lot of idling, these uh, not useful computations, these uh, computations here. So it's, see, on this region, this seems to be a pattern that seems to be noisy, noise, or we could initially classify as noise, seems to be having an impact on the application, and we may have to look for it in more detail later. We can try to look at other parts of the traces and see if we can identify other patterns. This one seems to be an important. Oh, sorry. This one seems to be an important, an important one. I can fit the scale so that I see all the all the trace in, in, in filling the, gra the gradient scale. And I don't know. I, I see some variability here. For example, if I zoom in this part, do I see some variability or not? With at this scale, maybe if I zoom, if I fit the scale to see, I do see some some variability. And so this this guy is here. This guy here seems to be taking more time than the other, get finalizing later than the other. So is this noise? Is this noise in these guys? Is this noise coming from somewhere else because it might reflect the perturbation, maybe initially visible somewhere, but the actual cause may be somewhere else? So these are the kind of questions that we should try to, to identify. In this case, we can drill down and we can, for example, we can drill down here and it comes out that the actual duration of the, all of these guys is about the same. So this one is not taking longer to finalize because he is longer to execute seems to be that he's taking longer to finalize because he's starting later. And why is he starting later? He's starting later because here, this guy is starting later. But there was another guy here who also started later and finished later, but this guy is not doing activity. So what we see is that in this case, for example, the hypothesis is noise has been suffered by this process. This makes, of course, himself to be delayed. But this other process, who has not suffered the noise, is actually suffering the effect that there is a communication dependence between them. This is the kind of qualitative uh, speculations or qualitative analysis that, that we should try to do on a first analysis or first contact with, with, uh, with the trace. But what I said is the important thing is, are we able to demonstrate in terms of uh, of uh, frequency whether this is this is the case? And uh, let me try to load another configuration file. This configuration file is a histogram of the frequency that is observed for each of the individual computations. It will come out. <coughs> 
this is the histogram this is the actual view of the frequency that we see at every for every individual burst which means computation burst between exit and entry of mpi calls as well as mpi bursts inside the mpi and and this is the histogram here and what the histogram tells us tells us by the way this is a histogram for the time for the bars that are outside mpi so the useful computation bars what it tells us is that there is a spike here which is around we see it at the bottom is around uh, 2.08 gigahertz so this is probably the frequency of the processor and this is what seems to be the frequency that most of the computations are but we see that there is some time spent at this frequency of 1.8, 1.9 gigahertz. And we may want to know, is this noise? Is this, where is this? So we can locate it in the trace file by selecting the region, this region. And we actually find out that it is in a part, most of it. There are some parts which is scattered around, but there's most of it is in a part which actually has the same behavior across all processors. So there is a reduction in frequency, but it's not a random, these random patterns that we would expect from, from regular noise. So for this part, we might have to do other hypotheses, like maybe it's related to activity of the process itself, maybe it's related to, to APX related changes of frequency, maybe it's related, so, but there is uh, something that we, I would probably discard it as actually operating system noise. In order to have more detail, more more detail look at this, maybe because the coloring here is not very is is, is too far to uniform. Maybe like, let's try to introduce a little bit more contrast by reducing the scale and making everything above. Uh, in this case, let's say, in this case, uh, everything above uh, two milliseconds, for example to be in orange so we spend more than two milliseconds of these frequencies but we have seen that there are bursts of frequencies of 1.3 1.3 megahertz so there are some parts of the execution at 1.3 megahertz they are very small in total we see this is a tot for a total of of uh, 800 microseconds 820 for example so we can see uh, also that if we ever even reduce that to half of that or to let's say 400 microseconds in total, we see that there are regions which also appear to have a relevant total contribution to the time, as well as regions with very low frequency that do have relevant contribution to the time. These regions are the ones that look like real preemptions. Okay, and well, this one running at one, one gigahertz instead of two, wh what could that be? Maybe we can change the statistics. Instead of reporting the time, we can we can look at what is the number of samples in those cases. And we see that even if most of the time is at, at the, the two gigahertz, there is many samples at, at this, at this uh, lower frequency. So if we try to identify where this happens on the timeline, we actually will see that it is a very, we can look at it and it happens in many places but there are places which are if we click on it there are places that are very very short we can see that in, in by looking at the timeline we can see that by computing not the number of instances but the average duration of those instances and if we are here the mouse says we are in regions which is on average only 1.28 microseconds so these are regions about where the frequency in reported frequency is, is relatively low. This is something that uh, probably has something to do with the actual overheads of capturing hardware counters and the fact that the reads are non-atomics. I tried in the past to convince some vendors to make the the read of the of the counters and the and the timestamps uh, atomically for that would be very good for the tools is I was not successful and I think is something that we have to deal with and we have to know that if the regions that we measure are very very short uh, the the measurement of the frequency is going to be will we're going to be very approximate uh, there will be because measurement errors but uh, what we can look is for other regions where we have longer computations here 
uh, we can see low frequency and longer computations and for these regions we can select them for example and we'll see that so they're very small very scattered but if we look maybe at the other trees that we were useful we were looking before this useful duration with uh, full scale if i copy and paste the default paste the, the same part of space and time to this other trace i will actually see that essentially I'm, I'm, I'm identifying the same regions that i was seeing on the top so really those are regions that have limited frequency very low frequency maybe another way of looking at it would be if we click on one of these regions and we can even oops we can even zoom further and I can copy this to a view of which is, for example, the, the view of cycles per microsecond. I have these regions where I have low frequency and low frequency, while other parts of the execution are running at high frequency. This is the curious thing. So in this part, the processes are doing busy waiting at high frequency, while this other guy is, is just being preempted. Okay, so this is about the basic mechanism to quantify and identify the structure, the, the, the metric of, of, uh, of cycles in, um, in the noise in the, in the traces. I can probably do something like load uh, and the other trace, which is, this is a trace of useful duration. Oops. I can load this trace. This is a trace of useful duration. This is filtered out of an original trace. This is actually filtered only preserving regions of computation which are longer than 100 microseconds out of an original trace. By the way, the original trace was in the order of 1.7 gigabytes. This filtered trace is kind of three orders of magnitude uh, smaller uh, when compressed. So, and it still allows us to do the same kind of analysis. I can load the previous configuration of the uh, useful duration. I can, and I can still see for the whole run, which are regions that have the distribution of durations. This we can identify as being, we typically identify as being the initialization as we did on the on the corresponding uh, presentation. Let's look at the iterative part. And in the iterative part, we, if we fit the times, the gradient colorings, we see that there are iterations. There are iterations where we see this kind of perturbed patterns. And you see they are very similar to what we have seen before. So there is, there is, a, there is a process which happens to be executing longer than longer than it should correspond or longer than in that its, its colleagues at, the, at that point in time. His delay actually starts causing delays everywhere with a certain delay as, as the dependencies propagate through the, through the communication dependency chain. So we can really suspect that this is probably a, a noise perturbation. We can see something similar here in a different process which means the matches with this nature of randomness that we would expect from, from noise. We can see that there are other parts where the behavior seems to be relatively more, more stable. This actually corresponds to the region that we have obtained the trace before. And the actual original trace is just a cut of this interval from the original, from the original trace. The other important thing is if I were to look at quantitative measurements of, for example, uh, of frequency, of frequency that I tried before. Unfortunately, what it says is none of the events necessary to compute that view are available on this trace because this is a filter trace. So the process, as we just we saw in the identification of a structure sec uh, presentation, the process is we identify what we speculate that is going to be uh, 
that is going to be a clean region and we cut this clean region and then we do further analysis on it. So it might, as we have seen, it actually has also some noise effects, but we have been able to hierarchically identify a structure, hierarchically try to identify and clean noise out of the original data, original raw data trace. This is the end of the presentation. I hope it has been useful and hope to see you again in the next presentation. Thank you.